And so. Hickabilly brings up an interesting question in the chat room. He says, with that division being all about 500, does that make it a good division or a bad division? I, I would like him to elaborate on that a little bit, because what does he mean by a bad division? I mean, obviously, if the teams have good records, it's got to be a good division. I was looking at that. I w- yeah, I mean, if you're saying is it the NFC East, I don't think so. No, but, no. Um, is Tampa Bay a good football team? Yes. Joke joke on them, as I do, about, you know, snatching victories out of the jaws of defeat. They still Bottom win. line is they're still winning. Exactly. Um, again, Atlanta, a good team, not a great team. I don't think you can deny New Orleans offensively very good, defensively maybe not so much, but that's not a bad football team either. They're by far strides ahead of the West. Um, so, you know, I, I think it's a good uh, division. Is it the NFC East? If that is that your point of contention? Is it the NFC East? No. Um, but I don't think it's a horrible... I don't think it's the AFC West either. You know, the AFC West is a bunch of terrible teams. Yeah, so the horrible teams. Watching the rest of this game right now, Arizona trying to make a little bit of a drive here. They're down by 11 with 48 seconds left to go, so they're still very well in this game, but they have to get a touchdown on a two-point conversion to get within field goal range. It's kind of out of reach, but hey, it's the NFL. We've seen some <laughs> weird things happen. Kind of switching back to college football, I want to thank Iceman real quick uh, for sending me this link on the bowl projections because we did start off the show by saying how much of a mess this is on BCS. And this is courtesy of ESPN.com from a couple writers, Mark Schablock and uh, Bruce Feldman. Uh, here's their projections. And I'm wondering what, you know, they're basing this on. But for, I'll start off with the Rose Bowl. They have Penn State and Oregon State right now in the Orange Bowl, or okay. the, the uh, Rose Bowl. Likely. Is, Likely so I think, happens. So I think they are thinking that Oregon State's going to win over Oregon mm-hmm. this upcoming week. So that may be something to keep an eye on. Virginia Tech taking on Cincinnati. Is Sh- um, Schlabach, or however the hell you pronounce his name, I don't freaking know. But Penn State versus, or wait, hold on, back up. Back, Orange Bowl, excuse me. Virginia Tech taking on Cincinnati, where Bruce Feldman has Florida State taking on Cincinnati. So he thinks FSU could still win the ACC, eh? Hey, a big statement going up to Maryland and beating them the way they did mm-hmm. uh, for Florida State. So, I mean, they're very much into it. Now, here's one that interests me. Sugar Bowl. Remember, last year in the Sugar Bowl was Georgia taking on Hawaii and how bad Georgia slaughtered the Rainbow Warriors, or if mm-hmm. they're still called the Rainbow Warriors. I think they're just Warriors, the Warriors now, now in yeah. Hawaii. But now, for the All-State Sugar Bowl, they have Alabama and Utah. In the Sugar Bowl. So you got another thing like that where you have another non-BCS team. And don't get me wrong, as good as Utah has played this year, I don't know if they can contend with a Bama team Mm -hmm. like that. Fiesta Bowl. This is where it gets interesting. Because both of them have USC being the at-large team going into the Fiesta Bowl. But they will take on either Texas or Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. Uh, Mark Schlabach has Texas and Bruce Feldman has Oklahoma. And then your national championship being Florida versus Oklahoma for Schlabach and Bruce Feldman having Florida and Texas, which that interests me because Utah gets fit in because they're the non-BCS. Mm-hmm. USC is going to get that love to be in a Fiesta Bowl because they're USC and they, you know, the love affair that's between the voters and USC. But here's some other interesting bowls for teams that may possibly deserve an at-large bid, okay? Capital One Bowl, which, by the way, takes place here in Orlando, is Georgia and Ohio State. Mm. That's one interesting bowl to take a look at. Hey, if Ohio State's in Orlando, if Ohio State's in Orlando, I'm all for going to that one. I'm going. I'm definitely finding a way to get to that one. Boise State. Remember, they are undefeated, and they were in the BCS picture a couple years ago, beating Oklahoma in that Fiesta Bowl. They have. Boise State taking on either Wake Forest or Maryland. So Boise State would get held out over Utah. What ball game was that? That was the... The one I won't be watching? The road... <laughs> <laughs> Listen to this one. The Roadies Humanitarian Bowl. That's a good reason why. Well, that's the one with the blue turf, though, right? I. You know what? It could be. It could be a home game for, for Boise. Boise State, right? Okay. But I won't be watching it anyway. Go on. Continue. <laughs> the... the I just like that. The Roadies Humanitarian Bowl. What are the two new bowls that they... Oh, yeah. The New Mexico Bowl and the St. Petersburg... Uh, St. P- Peter... Meh. St. Petersburg Bowl. There we go. Got that out of there. Uh. This is why we need a playoff. My God. It's horrible. I need the St. Peters Bowl. What does St. Petersburg do... 
to get a, their own bowl. Seriously. Their baseball team went to the World Series? <laughs> sure, I guess. Uh, but, I mean, yeah. We are talking about St. Petersburg, Florida, not St. Petersburg, Russia, right? I, that'd be a hell of a bowl game. <laughs> <laughs> you bet you're playing that one out in Russia? <laughs> <laughs> Yikes. It looks like the Giants are going to seal this game up, though. They got the ball back. Arizona, I guess, is only able to get a field goal out of it because it's 37-29, and Giants are going to kneel this one and take it home. So the Giants go back into the desert, go back into Arizona, where, of course, last year defeated the Patriots in the Super Bowl, come back and win today. Now they are 10-1 and on the season. What a year for the Giants. You know, a couple of years, everyone was thinking, well, the Giants – you know, they just got on a hot streak and was able to win the Super Bowl that way because they got hot late. I don't think they're uh, looking like they're going to be yeah, losing They're still kind of lukewarm. Warm. Yeah, they're still hanging in there big time, man. Wow, the Giants with a I – mean, that's kind of a statement for, for me because that, Arizona's been tough mm-hmm. all year at home when it comes to the Cardinals. You know, But we can talk about that Giant team a minute. You know, kind of going more with that, you know, that, that it was a team that everyone thought – was just on a hot streak and just ended their season on a high note because of how well they were playing late in the year. Now here they are 10-1 and one after a convincing win over Arizona where Kurt Warner may be sipping the same fountain of youth that what Brett Favre was. A lot of people are saying Kurt Warner could be this year's MVP because of how well he's bounced back. But, I mean, what do you make of the Giants this year? I mean, especially with a division that was supposed to be as tough as the NFC East, they're right now, other than... That fluke loss to Cleveland a, b- a couple months ago, they look as though they are just going to run the rest of the table in the NFL. Well, I think the great thing for the Giants is that they got off to a good start. And I think much like last year, um, when when the Giants went on that playoff run, Eli Manning gained confidence. When Eli Manning is playing confident, he is a very good quarterback. He is a different quarterback. Oh, wait, 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 wait. wait. Did, did I just hear what I... Is this coming from the this guy from me. A, almost a year ago? That hey, Eli Manning, yeah. <laughs> yep, 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 yep. Um, you know, so and found that Photoshop <laughs> picture of Eli Manning. Just that was not over. Photoshop. <laughs> that was some good stuff right there. That was one hell of a party. Oh, um, <laughs> I should wear my bow tie again. Um, but, you know, when he's confident, it's infectious. It spreads to the rest of the team, and the Giants do what they did last year. They beat the Patriots in the Super Bowl. They got off to a good start this year, which I think was key. It was absolutely key. He's playing with confidence. They're defending championships, champions. Got off to a good start. He's playing with confidence. The team believes in him. He believes in his team. They're winning on the field. So as long as they keep that going, they're going to be a very tough team to knock off. Yeah, I just, I mean, like I said, the only bad game I saw of the Giants was when they had that fluke loss against Cleveland on a Monday night game that was like two months ago but I mean ever since then I mean the running game has been phenomenal they've been playing extremely physical you thought that that defense was going to take a hit losing Strahan and Umanora Umanora to injury Strahan retired Mm -hmm. it was all basically on Justin Tuck and you know they bring in uh, Matthias Kiwanuka back at defensive end they were trying to have him as a linebacker but they brought him back as a you know rush end for the Giants, and all of a sudden, they still haven't lost a step. And, you know, I think the running game, though, has tremendously helped Eli Manning. And also, you know, getting rid of Shockey, getting rid of that cancer has made the Giants a more tight-knit team as well. Uh, advice to the Cincinnati Bengals with Chad Johnson.